Okay, in this video, I want to show uh, just a quick little demo of how I'm making uh, anterior programmers. Now, the term anterior programmer is a fairly general term. There's lots of different designs for this, but the point of the the, um, the appliance is is to keep uh, occlusion only in the anterior area of the appliance and nothing in the posterior, uh, allowing the the joints to relax uh, or the muscles to relax and the joints to seat properly. Um, th again, there's lots of different reasons to use this, um, and I won't really get into all those reasons uh, when to or when not to. This is just a video about how you would create something like this, and you can also use this uh, technique um, to make other types of appliances as well. So, uh, first of all, this is a, a mesh that I or this is. Let me go ahead and hit the select button, the S button, to separate out this uh, overlay or mesh, as I like to call it. I'm going to hit the Y button, which will separate it out. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here, and I'm going to turn off the mesh. You can see this is the optical scan of the patient's mouth, and we're going to go ahead and create uh, this occlusal guard on these teeth. Now, one thing that's important to note, you can see the uh, the tip of the arch, and that's actually done when I created the mesh. I made, created the mesh in Blue Sky Plan. Um, it does a great job of removing undercuts, uh, which can be a little bit tricky when you do it, say, in Mesh Mixer or other third-party softwares. But um, what I like to do is I still want to have good engagement. And if you have this arch, the normal path of draw is going to leave big open spaces in, in here. So I tip it down so that as I'm looking straight down, I can see the facial surfaces, and then I create my mesh over top of that. That way I don't have a big gap in the along the gingival area up here. It's got pretty good adaptation, but the undercuts have still been removed. That way I'm not worried about getting too tight or too much um, post-processing adjustments that I have to make to get it to seat. So that's just my preference, not necessary. You can also elect to not remove the undercuts, which if you're going to do that, you can do a lot of that right in Mesh Mixer. But then you have the, the risk that you're going to have to remove a bunch of the undercuts of the material. So anyway, just a quick little intro as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so here I am. I've got the two. I've got the model and I've got the mesh. As I'll continue to refer to this as the mesh. First thing I'm going to recommend you do is you duplicate the mesh. It's always good as you start working on a project to go ahead and duplicate it um, just so that you have, you can always come back. So I'm going to say guard working model. Yeah, I'll just call it guard. I don't need to, to, I'm pretty detailed and organized and typically so I tend to overdo things probably to a degree. So anyway, here is our guard. Um, now the first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to be creating an anterior discluding element. Um, sometimes uh, you, it'll just be basically a flat plane up here uh, covering from kind of canine to canine. You can do that fairly easily using this technique as well. Um, there are other appliances like the NTI which have essentially a, a, a ramp that it rides along. And there are some other ones very similar to NTI and that's actually kind of the approach that I like. I like the um, four to five millimeter um, little ramp here for the lower teeth to slide on. Uh, if you're worried about any of that uh, anterior uh, intrusion of the lower of the lower anteriors, you can always put the patient in Essex on the lower. Pretty simple, minimal, easy to make and the patient wears that and then the, they won't have to worry about any sort of adverse force on those incisors. So again, I haven't seen that as an issue, but I know some people have. So again, not getting into the reasons why to use it, but if that's something you're worried about, that's a an option. So we've got this. Um, sometimes I think it's actually easier to visualize what's going on if I had the teeth. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can uh, create this deep, this discluding element so that it kind of runs along the path, uh, the plane of occlusion. I will admit when I make these, I almost never get an opposing uh, arch. Um, and I might not even, I mean, I, th for that matter, I don't get a bite relation either. Uh, these, I believe, can be made fairly predictably with one single arch, um, kind of taking a couple quick measurements, fabricating, and if necessary, you can adjust the mouth, but honestly, that's pretty rare. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to make that discluding element. One thing to keep in mind, that's going to be the longest process of this entire video. Now, the nice thing is, you only have to do that once. From er every other case, you can bring that discluding element in and just replicate it, and then the process from there on is about a two-minute process, if that. But the creating the discluding element takes a little bit of time and some creativity. So I'm going to show you the way I like to do it. And honestly, it gets kind of funny, but I come up here to the meshes that are automatically included, and I'm going to come to the uh, letters. And I like the shape of the... Um, 
Oh, sorry, actually, I'm going to use the numbers. I've tried with the U, the U works as well, but I'm going to use the, the letter zero, or the number zero. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and repair it. Um, it comes in hollow, so let's go ahead and make that a solid object. And so now what we're going to do is we're really, literally only going to be using the top of this. It's going to be kind of different. I'll show you how this all works. Um, so we've, we can go to Edit, Plain Cut, and I'm going to cut it right about, yeah, say right about there. And notice if this is flipped, I don't want this piece, I want the top. I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to Plain Cut again, and this time I'm going to cap off the top here about one half or yeah, about one third of it or so one third to one half of the width and this I want this part not the top so let's push this little arrow and so that's what we're gonna have I hit accept and so this is my discluding element and you might think that's kind of a funky shape it's completely opposite what I'm expecting it to look like well, now we're going to get to where it's kind of fun to play with. Um, so if I hit the T button, that's the same thing as transform. I can now squish it so that it's super narrow. I can also shorten it. Keep squishing it until it's about where I want. And, we'll s and I'll show you in a minute how that looks and what, it should, what I want it to look like. And then I can also make it longer. Um, if you notice over here, the x-axis is getting or sorry the the z axis is getting wider and wider. I like this to be about 13 millimeters. So I can go ahead and just change it to 13 millimeters. And it uniformly scaled, so I don't really want it that wide. And I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. All right. So there we go. That is the end of it. I'm going to call this the lower Discluding an element. Okay, and then I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. I'm gonna hit the D button again, uh, or sorry, the the T button again to transform. And now we're gonna start making this uh, look a little bit more familiar to you. So I like it to stick. Well, first of all, we need to l level it with the plane of occlusion, and it's actually upside down. Because I'm hoping to have that little flat area in the middle there be the actual discluding element portion. So it's about level with the plane of occlusion. I'm going to center it. Now I like to have it pretty much in line with the. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm losing. I'm able to tip that much. Okay, I like to have it with the um, canine cuss tips just in front of them and then extend beyond that. Six to eight millimeters in front of the teeth is pretty common. Um, and so this is a pretty good position for me. Um, it's centered, everything about it looks good. I'm gonna change that so I am restricted to movements again. Okay, hit, o hit enter, and now this is locked in. One more thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hollow this out. And I'll show you why in a moment, but click S to select, make it smaller, which isn't actually necessary, but I'm gonna click on this. It just highlights that surface in there. Hit delete. And now I've got this sort of trough, if you will. So that that one is done. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's soon. Yeah, it looks pretty straight. This patient's, yeah. OK, so we've got the bottom portion done. And you'll see what this looks like in a minute. But we still want to have the little ramp that makes it progressive down from here. Um, you can try without, but trust me, it's a it does not work out well at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to go ahead and change it. I'm going to call it front DE, just for my own uh, tracking. I'm going to hit T for transform again, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it until it's 135 degrees, or in other words, 45 degrees to this. And that's about where I want it. Now, one thing that's important to notice, let me go ahead and turn off those upper teeth. It's sticking inside of it. I don't want that. I definitely do not want that. I'm going to shorten it a bit. And you notice I'm trying to bring these tips together. One other thing I want to do is I don't need this to be as gradual of a slope. So I'm going to change that a little bit. 
by shrinking that down and bring it right back into contact right there. And as long as it's not sticking through, and I really don't even want it to have contact with it too much, so I'm going to shorten it a little bit more. And keep doing that until it's just barely poking in there. Again, I found that I don't want it to poke in there at all if I can, or a little bit's fine, but there we go. I am done. These two. So here's what's important to remember. I'm going to hit accept. These two guys, I'm going to go ahead and click on both of them, lower, and if you want, you can duplicate, whatever. I'm going to combine them. So they are now one object. This is the discluding element. This is where I would recommend um, coming up here and hitting export and saving it somewhere. This is the thing you're going to bring into every case. You may need to manipulate things around a little bit, but for the most part, you should be able to drop it in the case and start working right away. So everything from here on out is what you're going to have to do multiple times. That's the one-time thing, and you know it took me about five to ten minutes to explain the process. Here's how quickly you're going to make your night guard. First, we're going to go ahead and the excluding element is going to be the object we're going to attract to. The guard is what we're going to manipulate. So right now you can see how it's sort of trans transparent. That's because it's the magnet has been turned on. And now to, to use this tool, we have to come up here to Sculpt, click on Attract, and now bring our tool right over top of here. And so now I can Uh, it's essentially inflating the object through until it sees that. Now, here's the problem. You can't see it. I'm going to hit Control Z. The reason is I left those first two on, on accident. Sorry about that. Okay. So now, as I use the, you can actually see it inflate up into this um, discluding element. And you'll see what I mean progressively. And let me just give you an idea. You see how it's extruding out there? So make sure your strength is on 100% because you, you can't screw this up really. So the, f the higher the percentage, the faster it'll work. And I am just essentially uh, inflating this object until it occupies the space of this discluding element. So do the anterior part first. If you try to do the lower part first, it will not work. Let me just tell you that it will work. Um, well, I guess it may work since you have the anterior part. But anyways, um, before I started including the including them as w one solid piece, uh, I had to do the anterior and then the posterior. So, um, or the anterior and then the uh, lower. So, if you want to make this a little extra round, you can come through here. Not truly relevant. Well, this part is relevant. Fill in these voids. Okay. All looks pretty good. Okay. So now, let me do this last little void here. If we go ahead and turn off the magnet, hide that. Here is our appliance. Done. You can now export and be done with it. If you want to be picky, you can come through with your um, smooth and make sure it's dialed down a bit. Maybe not so big. I'm using the little brackets button to make it smaller and bigger. And smooth out these transitions if you'd like. Not at all necessary. But if you're picky and you want this as smooth as can be, um, you can spend a little time doing that, but again, it it's really doesn't matter for all intents and purposes. Okay, there is your uh, anterior programmer, ready to print. Control E to export. One little th fact that I want to point out is that um, I didn't mention is this right here, volumetric checkbox, make sure you are unchecking that um, before you use tools. It didn't affect me, but sometimes it'll actually affect the inside surface. Um, and actually, one way to know if it did, is, and it may have right there. Uh, let's go ahead and see what 
Yeah, you see how it's you can't see the underside one anywhere else but these areas. That tells me that these areas were slightly affected. Most likely, uh, I'm guessing it isn't enough because it just pulled away. It's going to create tiny little voids essentially between the fit of the tooth and the guard. That's not going to matter, but sometimes it can really mess with it and you don't want to deal with that. So, um, all right. Well, let me know if you have any questions in the comments.